Hey everyone, my name is Michael Gamilla and I'm the programming director of Image Out. And so glad that you can join us here at Virtual Image Out. And we are going to have a conversation about the film Nowhere. And this is a US and Colombian production. Uh, but before that, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, all our Q&As are available on our Facebook page and on our new YouTube channel. So uh, if you're interested, subscribe um, and follow us on Facebook. This is also available on Eventive. And uh, just another reminder that all our films are eligible for the Audience Awards. So make sure you come back on Eventive and vote for the film after you've watched it. Uh, so we have some special guests tonight to talk about the film Nowhere. So I'd like to introduce uh, them right now. We have uh, writer and co-directors uh, Francisco Salazar and uh, his brother David Salazar. Hello, everyone. Hello, you guys. I should say David. <laughs> 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 hey, guys. Hi, my. Um, Good to have you back. Uh, we really, a lot of people really enjoyed our conversation uh, over the weekend uh, with a couple of other filmmakers. I'm glad that uh, you can come back. Yeah, that Thank was you. really fun. Thank you so much for that. I'm really excited to talk about our film with you today. Yeah, um, so we have some cast members that you brought in with you tonight. Uh, so let's welcome uh, Juan Pablo Castiblanco, who plays, hello, uh, hello. Thank you yeah, who plays you. Sebastian in the film. And he looks glamorous tonight, not the schoolboy that he looked like in the movie. <laughs> You're a star tonight. <laughs> and also we have <laughs> Natalie Rangel, who played us. Uh, Hi, Natalie. Hi, thank you so much for having us here. No, I'm glad you could join us. Um, this is the one good thing about going virtual this year is having uh, the ability to bring in people from all over that we would never have been able to do if we were physical um, because, well, we don't have the budget. <laughs> I'm saying that because both uh, Juan Pablo and uh, Natalie are in Colombia, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, welcome, Colombia. I, I'm from the Philippines, so we have a tight connection, actually. I, I don't know if you follow because we are forever connected at the 2015 Miss Universe pageant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when uh, um, Steve Harvey mistakenly announced Colombia as the winner and it was Miss Philippines. So we will be forever tied in the beauty pageant history. Anyway, not that, not that other people care, but I care. <laughs> so um, hopefully, um, Miguel Gonzalez, uh, who okay. is, oh, hi. See, hey, I just say it and he appears. It's a family name, I'm just well, here. <laughs> I'm glad you could join us. Uh, Miguel plays Adrian in the film. And uh, so now we have the three main cast in the film. So thanks for, uh, for joining us tonight. Um, so I would, first of all, I'd like to congratulate your team because, um, I heard uh, over the weekend that you got picked up for distribution, at least in North America. I don't know if that's for the world, uh, by TLA releasing. So mm -hmm. that's a great thing for your for your film because someone would actually uh, distribute you on a VOD and a DVD here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and they have the marketing machine behind it. So, and hopefully that's just the start, and you'll get picked up for. Uh, other territories around the world. So congratulations. Thank you so uh, much. Um, just for everyone's uh, knowledge that Image Out had nowhere before it got really famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let, let me start by saying, because um, I know this is your first film mm -hmm. uh, that, that you produced anyway. Um, what is... What's about the story that uh, made you want to do the film? Um, and, and how did you come about with, uh, with this particular story? Because it's very specific. <laughs> yes, so this was not, I, I think we talked about it in our last conversation on Sunday about what, whether um, this was the ideal first film. And 
we actually had another movie that we've been working on for a while that was going to be the first feature that didn't happen. And so we spent a couple of years trying to figure out what the right script would be to produce and direct and what really meant something to us. And, you know, we were hovering around themes of immigration for a while. There was an LGBT theme. We were writing different scripts. We were both working on different scripts. And then we eventually came to, you know, we were talking about issues of identity, of immigration. And eventually we just kind of sat down together, looked at the different ideas that we had and kind of, you know, blended them to create a story that focused on different kinds of identity across a wide spectrum, identity in terms of nationality, identity professional, obviously identity in, in terms of, of, you know, the LGBTQ aspect of the story. And then we kind of brought in a lot of very personal experiences about relationships and about love and about identity. And I know for one, I know Dave brought in a lot of aspects of his previous relationship. I know I brought a lot of uh, ideas and uh, a lot of things about my own personal journey. So we really did combine. And then we also combined it with a couple of stories that we had heard of immigration, uh, about some of our friends who were studying from abroad and who were trying to stay in this country and unfortunately were not able to do the immigration law. So we really combined um, a lot of intimate and real world circumstances that we were living through and that we were seeing around us. Yeah, but why is it important to include the queer story because it could have easily been just an immigration story and that would just that would be a lot already so because it was important to show um an aspect of latin american society that is unfortunately not talked about as much particularly in in colombia and, and i for one wanted to be able to tell part of that personal journey from of mine into that in, in into that aspect of the film and, and i think it was really important it was really important to show that aspect and to show that that uh, that that part of, of society that is still not talked about and and, and needs to be talked about. Um, so for for the three actors, Miguel, uh, Natalie, and Juan Pablo, um, having heard that, you know the the journey of uh, the brothers in 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 putting together the film, um, what attracted you? to the project to make you want to do it? Uh, I think that when I first met David and Francisco, um, I was so glad to, to know new people from another country uh, with Colombian roots, living in New York and wanting to uh, expand their limits and to start filming in, in the country I, I grew up. Uh, they grew up in, in New York, where they have a really close connection with Colombia. And start to meet new people who wants to do cinema in Colombia and have the first opportunity to do it in, in both languages, English and Spanish, and have the opportunity to just keep shooting in the in the U.S. For, um, actually, <laughs> started filming in the U.S. for the first time. That was amazing. And... When I read the, the script and I met the brothers, I, I really wanted to to be part of this project and to uh, travel to the U.S. and have this experience with my partners, Natalie, Juan Pablo, and the rest of the cast. And I think it was a really good opportunity. I, I was so excited to do it. And I'm glad we are here in the image how to like speaking about this process and opportunity. So Juan Pablo? Yeah, in my case, when I met Francisco and David, I was sure to be involved in this story because they were really honest with their job. And the story is a story that shows us just a love story. And I love that anyone can feel identified with this. And also it's a story that teaches us that there's a place for anyone in the world. And I mean, like, if you love yourself, if you accept yourself, you can find a place that you belong. So they were really honest. They also are musicians. So everything was made with, with passion. So getting involved in this project made me feel like so happy and so glad to to be part of something special. And in this case, to be part in Match Out Film Festival. And Natalie? I think what brought my attention from the film first was the, the, the aspect of, you know, all this immigration thing. 
Um, then the, the aspect of, of the love story and that it's a story also about youth, you know, and now um, we're still in that in that kind of situation, you know, living all that stuff of immigration, you know, if you want to study outside of the country and then if you go outside of the country, you know, when you connect with other people and all this this love story and also about, you know, inclusion, you know, about respect, about about human beings, you know, and now that we we've kind of starting to live, you know, this this kind of freedom that we've all been been wanting to search for. So I think it's an interesting film as well because it, it takes, you know, all the aspects that we're living nowadays and and also, you know, the the thing, the fact about knowing that also it was going to be in English. So also, you know, I think, you know, all of us as actors or we all have our stories, you know, and I think it's very important as well to as, as actors to play different type of roles and if we can speak another language and tell a story through another language well it's it's really interesting and it's beautiful i think well now now that you mentioned um the english part um i i, I was wondering uh was it was the decision to uh, film an english language film prim primarily well, no, because there's a lot of Spanish too, you know, when, 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 when Adrian and Sebastian are together. Um, was that because it was shot in New York? Well, actually, um, you, you shot in both Colombia and New York, right? Yes. Yes, yes, we did. And I, I think it, it was, for me personally, a really good opportunity. I understand that we want to show uh, beyond the, the barriers of, of language uh, as a love story. Everybody can identify with a love story. But for me, it's important to expand myself and to, as an actor in Colombia, to be able to have this kind of opportunity to speak in another language, to travel to another country. And actually, I, I was just watching all the, the voting information now for the elections in the US, and you can notice that it, there are different languages in the same university place. And I actually believe that in the US, Spanish is a really important language right now, nowadays. So yeah, well, we are speaking in, in Spanish when we are together when, with, with Sebastian, but we, we need to speak in English in, in order to be able to interact with the other people in the yeah, when we were, when we were writing the script i think there was a there was a clear intent to distinguish between their inner intimate world and, and their interaction with the outside world and obviously since the story takes place in new york i mean it made sense for that and we really wanted to we really made an effort to find english speakers amongst their friends because we we could have easily you know so to be fair we we shot most of movie in colombia and that was one of the hurdles that we you, you said you shot most of the film in Colombia? Yeah. Yes, we, we shot, shot most, most of the, the film, film in Colombia. Colombia. Well, you fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Movie magic, right? <laughs> so that was actually one of the major hurdles that we had. Because when we wrote the script, we definitely wanted to maintain that, that sense that they're in New York, they're living in, in the city, and the world around them is the United States. But obviously, when we shot most of the film in Colombia, and we needed to find their friends, because... When we shot in New York, only Miguel and Juan Pablo flew up to New York. And then there were a couple Colombia. of other actors that were, were, were that worked with us in New York. But we had yeah. to get the rest of the cast to be able to. In Colombia. In and Colombia. so we made a big, we had to make a big effort again. Our casting director, Consuelo Gacha, really worked to find actors that, you know, in Nati's case, mm -hmm. Nati's. Um, well, Natalie w immigrated to the United States. She studied in Boston and New York. Some of our other cast members also studied in Florida, in New York. So they had they, they had that immigration story already entrenched into their lives. So that was also that also I know that Natalie had said that that was also one of the things that brought her to the script because she because her audition tape her audition tape had to be about immigration. She had to talk about her immigration experience, and that's what what you know what drew us so closely when when she uh, when when she she was cast into the film. So right. Uh, talk about Natalie, I thought she was American, so she fooled me too. <laughs> uh, I, 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 was, uh, I was thinking about uh, 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 when, when, when I watched the film, I'm like, so they just shot the final scenes in Colombia? That's expensive. So I, just, 
But apparently, well, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I, I should have known that the inter, the, the, you know, all the, uh, what you might call that, the, 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 the interior shots could have easily been anywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, movie yeah. magic, like I said. I, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, when Dave was when Dave was uh, in Colombia for the first six months of pre-production, I was in New York, so I was looking. I was I was literally taking pictures and sending them to David. I was taking pictures of all different um, exteriors that we wanted to use, as well as interiors that could that they needed to look for that looked like like that in New York, and that's what my my brother and producer Jimena uh, uh, and Andonov. That's what they did while I was in New York uh, doing all the other. Uh, prep, prep for for when we came to New York. So you were trying to match. Yes. <laughs> how 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 important is it to uh, for your first film to feature Colombia? Because you you were born you were born in the U.S. right, and you grew up in the U.S. But was it important? Well, I, my question was it important for you to to make your first film to have Colombia be a big part of your first film? Actually, yes, because you know, while our while we were in, we were in um, college, we we didn't really reach out to our roots as much. But then when I went to masters, I did a half thesis on Latin American cinema and realized how much un underrepresented we were in, in this country, and it was really important, and it still is really important for the next films that you know we we showcase our culture because we grew up in a very Colombian household. We travel to Colombia. Colombia is entrenched in our in our in our life, in our culture, in our, in culture. our upbringing, in our traditions, in our language. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for us, it was yeah, it was hugely important to make sure that we brought that into the film in some way. And obviously, you know, when we're talking a story about immigration and we're talking about the challenges of, of, of people coming from another country. Obviously, Colombia was at the top of our minds right away. Uh, and and when 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 I said I want to make an LGBT film to my brother that was also something that we said, how many Colombian films have been, how many LGBT Colombian films are there? And you can count them on, on a few fingers and, and you won't fat find many. And I said, we need to tell this story because it's really important for, for, for me so and for so many other people who, who watch these films and who see themselves on screen. And that's, that's really important. That's why L LGBT film festivals are important because we get to see ourselves on screen. I could not agree more. <laughs> so um, going back to the film, because um, for me, uh, you know, we keep talking about the immigration part, but really for me, the film is really about homophobia and acceptance. And immigration is just a vehicle uh, to, to talk about that. Because the problem is not really immigration per se, mm -hmm. it's about Adrian, you know, you, Adrian, <laughs> you and your um, stubbornness to be closeted to your family. Um, uh, that's that's the whole problem in this film, uh, you know, because it's about the relationship for, first and foremost. So the problem wasn't immigration for me. It's about, uh, you know, how, how Adrian's, uh, you know, internal homophobia is affecting his relationships and how he wants to be in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my question is, where do you think that internal homophobia in Adrian's character is rooted in? Is that, now I forgot if it, there was an incident with his parents, that's why he was so afraid to come out to his parents. I, I've watched so many movies, so I can't. I can't remember. It's Sebastian's. The Sebastian's experience with his father, who reject father who rejects him, that you know that that, that uh, causes also that fear that his parents that his parents will do the same, same thing to him as well. So I, I, I mean, let me just answer really quickly, and I'll give the the the, the Miguel to I think I think one of the things that's really really difficult is fear. Fear yeah. that that he's going to have the same exact uh, experience. experience as Sebastian, and 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 Sebastian at the same time also fears that it, that Adrian is going to lose everything as well. And Adrian, you know, has this loving family that I don't think you know Sebastian wants to see get destroyed because of that. But yeah, but um, go ahead, Miguel. 
No, no, it's fine. I was thinking in all the the sensations and feelings that I, I, I may have. Um, you not know, just uh, his relationship with his family, also this kind of lack of empathy he has for Sebastian and that uh, control, like necessity, or this, this necessity to be living in New York uh, in this kind of comfort zone he is having there. And yeah, Michael, I think yeah, you, you, you read it really well because it's about uh, homophobia too. But I think for for the character and for my work, I was thinking not just in the homophobia, also in his relationship with Sebastian, his need enough to control everything. Um, at the end, he has this kind of lack of empathy for his partner and problems and problems, immigration problems and everything just goes down over him. And he has no control of everything, anything actually. So I, I think it's, it's. I don't know. There are many things around this kind of. Yeah. Did, did you want to add something, Juan Pablo? Because you, I, I, did you raise yeah, your yeah, hand I, or not? I have to say that. Yeah, sure. I have to say that it, there's a lot of fear in the characters, and it's because they are, they are. I mean, they come from a place that there's a lot of homophobic and not only in the film, in the real life, we are in a conservative a country that is suffering a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of homophobic and on, um, I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. But I mean, you are right when you are talking about homophobic because our characters are fear because they come to a place that they are reject just for being themselves. I mean, mm. uh, being different uh, for them is being uh, in their country is bad, but they have to discover that being different is being special. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as uh, Francisco said earlier, fear is a, a very strong and powerful emotion and it could ruin anyone uh, mm -hmm. or it could motivate someone. Um, yeah, so my question for Natalie, um, uh, talking about this fear and all that, I feel like you are the voice of reason in the film um, because of how your character is. Uh, so did you feel a little bit of uh, pressure in how you would be portraying your role? Because you want to come across as a friend still uh, sympathetic and all, but your character also wants to make sure that uh, things are being done for the right reason. So can you just talk about that a little bit, if you if you can? Yeah, I think I think as well. You know, she's she's this character, yeah, the, the, the voice of the reason. But as well, I think she has a moment, like when when she's doing the scene with Adrian and Sebastian when they're asking her for you know the the visa well she's like she also confronts herself and what i've also thought is you know that the film is also about understanding you know it's about love as well but first to, to love you need to understand the other human being so she's trying to be you know like to try to do the correct things but as well she's questioning herself also as a human being you know as what is really right and what is wrong and as well maybe that character as Stephanie is also trying to find herself. And I think that, you know, she's also trying to, as well as she's making a decision, she's, she's always asking questions. She's always questioning herself and her friends because she loves them. And of course, you know, she accepts them, but you know, she, she's not living what they are living. So it's also for her difficult in that way, but also it's understanding so it's a, that's her conflict, I, I guess, you know, trying to to go with the rules that, that they've given us, that the, the world has given us, or trying to go with our own reason in our hearts. I think that's that's kind of, you know, the, the kind of what I think about Stephanie in yeah. this, this role. I mean, it's easy, you know, when you watch the film, it's easy to just say it's about immigration, it's about love story, it's about homophobia, but really there's a lot of layers in the film that, uh, you know, one can find meaning. Um, so, you know, just kudos to you guys for writing such a, it's really more complex uh, 
than what you see because there's a lot of uh, emotions underneath that are involved. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing that I thought was interesting, and this is by no means any insult, and I don't want anyone watching it to be to feel that you know I'm trying to be insulting. I I thought that because of the story of immigration, I thought it felt authentic that your actors when they they have uh, they sound Latinos, you know, uh, that are in the U.S. Uh, because sometimes, you know, when, when we have these films, you know, they cast Latinos who are Americans and it doesn't sound as authentic. Uh, so, uh, you know, for that, you know, I, I give you kudos also to for making it authentic. And and it was easy because you apparently shot in Colombia. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in New York. But, so, but, it was, but it was always authentic. It was always something that we wanted. We wanted to create that authenticity because our parents are immigrants. They came to this country my dad has an accent. My mother has somewhat of an accent, even though she doesn't. But that's what we also grew up with. So it's important to give that authentic um, reality of what America is. You need to see everything in there. And, and we made a concerted effort to make sure that we could represent as many different cultures and as many different races into the film um, and create the, the, most, the most diverse New York we could. And actually, I think that uh, the accent it's also a statement, it's a kind of statement, because you show like openly that you are, because you were born in, in the US, you are doing a, a really like huge support to being able to communicate and um, to believe in, 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 the, in the language like everybody is speaking. But it's also important to, to keep in your, in your voice, your roots and this, this uh, statement that you are not from the from the country, you're like a, a guest in, in the case of as an economist who is living and studying in the U.S. But I, I speak about Adrian. Um, yeah, you're a guest, but you're you're being like really gentle with your host, and you're speaking in their language, even yeah. if you have. Why well, I'm an immigrant myself. Uh, you know, I, I I grew up in the Philippines. So when when early on. Uh, and this is true for other Filipinos, it's everyone wants to sound American, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and this is funny because you sound very different. Um, you sound passable, uh, you know, you can pass as someone, you know, that you, 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 you that as if uh, English is your first language, but then uh, we're always joking because when you're tired, that's when your accent comes out because you're <laughs> you're tired to act, <laughs> so you just everything is. Uh, so my friends would say you're tired because you sound Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you are actually, there so came a point when I thought, you know, why would I want to sound something other than who I am? I I actually find it more interesting when people have accents because it means there's more culture there that can be learned and talked about. Um, so I, you know, you but know. For me, for me in, a, in, in terms of the film, and my, my brother talked about it and he just mentioned it. And then I think that, especially for a film that's set in the US that's in English, it's okay for us to hear different sounds, different accents. And I think it needs to be more acceptable in films. I think that when we see movies with Latin American actors, I want to hear Latin American actors with their accents. I want to embrace that. I don't yeah. want, and I want to say like Miguel and Juan Pablo, they know they, they own the fact that they had accents and they went for it, you know? They were never afraid of the fact that, of where, how they were going to sound or whether it was going to read, they went for it. And I think that that's encouraging to other people, other actors who also might have um, accents who might also be, you know, wondering about if they have to sound more American. I think that with this film, we also wanted to emphasize that you don't need that. It's, they did an amazing job speaking English with the, the voices that they had. And that for me was also an important part of, of the way we told the story. That's part of real life, actually, yeah. I agree with, with, with David. Except Natalie, because she could fool us. Just <laughs> I, was, I was actually going to say that, you know, it's like, I've always said, like, because we always, as human beings, we, we always tend to judge, you know, when we meet someone, it's always like judging someone. So I've always said, like, 
you should put the other ones shoes, you know, like try to put yeah. them in place. Because as well, you know, for me, it's been different because when um, I was raised in the United States, then after 10 years, I came back to Colombia. Well, my parents took me back to Colombia. And then it was like, every time I was going to speak in English, it was like, oh my God, she's gringa. Or she's like, <laughs> so I felt uncomfortable, you know, I was a little kid. And for me, it was uncomfortable at first. And it was kind of bullying because I was like, so I should speak English in a bad way, like, or in a different way. So it's, it's as well, you know, for me, it's like, I feel proud as well, you know, to, to be able to say like, I speak two languages and yeah. I'm proud of that. And this is like, you know, like, people are like maybe, they, you know, maybe they were yeah. guilty. And of, you know, sometimes, you know, people ask me, so when you act in English, is it different? Well, it kind of is because it's the, my other essence, you know, it's, it's, it's another, character you know another living character that's there so so and this, uh, and this is why i love being able to do these conversations uh, right now in the virtual reality because it brings it so much color uh to our our, our conversations here at the festival mm -hmm. um yeah, I'm sorry, did, did you want to say something, Miguel? I cut you off. It makes me think something. And sometimes when you're uh, performing, you used to think in your um, modern language. And what happened when you start to think in other languages? I think if the work is to expand your mind, uh, if you learn new languages, you're expanding points of view, uh, your world, you are able to connect with other people, with other realities. And it's nice. It, sometimes I watch videos when some people are speaking in Spanish in the US and they tell them, speak in English in this country, people speak in English. And it's really rude. And it, I don't know, that makes me feel bad because in, in that country, in, in the US, people speak in different languages. And it's great to speak in different languages, in French, in English, in Greek, in yeah. Portuguese. You, you expand your frontiers and the frontiers of your mind also. For me, that's yeah. really important. We could, we, could not, we could have another long discussion about that, but I want to go back to the movie and uh, make sure that we talk about your movie. Um, so um, the film uh, is in Colombia and yeah, Colombia, just like in the Philippines, and I was talking to another team from Argentina, it's the same thing. Colombia is a, still a conservative society uh, with very conservative values. And on the surface, it would look like that people are accepting of um, uh, LGBTQ people or, or issues, but in reality, there's still a lot of uh, deep, deep conservative and uh, very re rooted in the religion, uh, and there's still not really an acceptance for the thing. So, because you wanted Colombia to be part of this movie, and it's a queer movie, was there any hesitation on your part? Uh, and I know you wanted to talk about, you wanted to make sure that there's a queer film that's made from Colombia talking about uh, Colombia, but, uh, were you afraid of what kind of reception it would get from your own country? No, I, I always said that, it, I always knew that there would be a hardship to release the film in Colombia because of what, because of the topic, because we don't really see LGBTQ films in Colombia. Um, but thankfully, I mean, you know, thankfully we, we do have distribution for, for Colombia. We have already shown the film on TV in Colombia. And, and thankfully, the audience that we've gotten has also been um, bigger than we expected. Uh, the following that we've gotten has been bigger than we, we've expected. The conversations that we've created has also been better than we've expected. And you know, thankfully, you know, like like Colombia, like the U.S., in the big cities, the big capitals, there's been a lot of progress. Um, there's a lot of acceptance, more acceptance than it was before. You go to the rural towns, it's it's still very, much, it's not talked about, it's still taboo. Uh, it's still a very, very tough subject to talk about. But I think by showing this film, and thankfully it's been able to be shown, 
we've been able to open up the conversation. I know a couple of other uh, filmmakers in Colombia have also made made uh, other films in the LGBT, and they've also been able to open up the conversation. So I think I, I for one, never had a hesitation. I always said, let's just go for it. I know that when we were in pre-production, we did have a couple of issues. Dave can actually talk to you about a one production company that we were looking at. I mean, yeah, so so yeah, that was maybe the only concern. And unfortunately, I think everyone can speak to the team that we had was super on board with the project and they were very emotional. But um, there was one instance in pre-production where we were looking for producers and looking for like, putting together a team where, you know, a couple of people read the screenplay and I took a meeting with them and he was on the phone. And one of the comments was, it's not gay enough. And we're like, what do you mean by it's not gay enough? He's like, no. And, and the person wanted this very, a very different aesthetic, you know, that I'm sure that for other films in other gay films would be perfect, but it just didn't fit this story. But this person was so insistent that it had to like kind of go on this very specific aesthetic that he had in mind. It was a very specific agenda. And, and I, I felt, you know, what does it mean to be not gay enough. I, I said, I, I told Dave, I said, that doesn't make any sense because I think there's so much spectrum to ha what, what being gay means. So I, I told him like, that's not what we want to do. And, and we just had to move on. And that was probably the only instance that we, we felt like we has people push back on, yeah. on, 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 on working with us on the project. I so when like, they, when, sorry, when they, when people talk about that, you know, as a film, programmer also we, we encounter the same thing because i would show a film and some people would say that doesn't you know gay. what are you talking about these people have been gay from beginning to the end of the movie uh, but i think people want to see you know gay intimacy and you know kissing and you know see them in bed or something that's that mm -hmm. what makes uh, a lot of films gay for for some people unfortunately and when you start uh, having the gay people act like normal people or re regular people, it, it, they, they, they don't think of them as gay anymore, which is absurd, you know? Yeah. Well, exactly. And I think, I think like, like I said, there is so many different spectrums of, of, of gayness. And I think we need, to, we need to be able to represent all types so that we can, you know, because, you know, if someone sees a, a movie with with drag queens or someone sees a movie where everyone is, you know, there's there's been stereotypes that have been created in, on television where all the gay characters are flamboyant and not necessarily is there, you know, if you're gay, does that mean you're going to be flamboyant? You're going to be a drag queen? You're going to go and do all these things? Everyone, everyone has a different way of being. And I think we need to represent all of those different yeah. spectrums. Of, of of gayness and that was that was that that for me and i know for dave was really important that that our vision was what was shown in, the, in this in this particular yeah. i think this, we have a question i i have a lot of follow-up uh with that discussion but there is a question that is coming from uh facebook mm -hmm. uh can you read that yes Often TV movies, stories about immigration center on relationships between one citizen and one immigrant and the tension that is that creates. Can you talk about the choice for the love story to be between two immigrants, Dave? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, we, we, we definitely talked about that possibility, but then we also felt that on some level, if we did that way, then there wouldn't be the, at the core of the story, like you said, there's that homophobia and the solution for them is in in, in uh, Adrian's hands. The solution is, Adrian, you go back and you face your family, you open up and you accept your fate and you own who you are, regardless of the consequences. But if one of them was an immigrant and the other one was not, it made it too easy. Because in theory, if they loved each other so much, the citizen can just marry the immigrant, stories over, problem, problem solved. You mm -hmm. know, but if it's both of them are immigrants, there really is something at stake for one of them to return and the other one having to make a choice of going back or not. And that was really where it came down to. Uh, the, and the stakes are higher, right? Like, like you said, you know, they could get married and story is over. So yeah. you talked about, uh, um, you know, you just grazed that uh, fact that the, the film has shown on Colombian TV. Uh, was that something that you pursued yourself? Or was that something that your distributor suggested 
did you want to be because I know I know you want the film to be seen, right? Yes. Uh, did you ever think that it will be shown on TV actually? Well, it was actually thanks to COVID because that was actually supposed to be in a in a festival in Medellin. And so the festival was put virtually, but the way that they did the festival was on two different platforms, Boonet uh, and um, and uh, Teleantioquia. So we got the 11.30 uh, p.m. Uh, night hour on Teleantioquia, and that's and that's how it was, that was able to, to do that. <laughs> it's prime time. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now the, our, our actors, uh, you're all Colombian based, so were you able to watch it on TV or, and uh, watch it with your family or friends or were you trying to uh, no, hide the fact from your family that your, your gay movie is on TV? Well, can you talk about that? <laughs> my, my family lives in Argentina, so they couldn't see it. We need a way to have the opportunity to have it hopefully in open television too in, in Argentina. But a lot of my friends, uh, um, friends from my university, watch it and they then they write to me and they were so glad to have this the opportunity to, to watch the movie on, on TV and I just want to connect something really fast uh, uh, question you made uh, before and it was about the Colombia and how conservative it, it is but I have good news Mike because we we have the first major uh, LGBTQ plus, uh, she's she's a lesbian. She was actually married with a senator of the uh, Republic, who's also a, a woman. So that's that's really important for us. Is the first woman in the history who is in office in Bogota, in the, in the capital city of Colombia. So that's that shows that our country, yes, it, it's maybe could be conservative, but also the young people and the politics and are, are changing. And we can see different faces, not 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 only in the open television uh, showing our movie, you know, in the real life. Well, that's that's always encouraging, and I think that's happening in in a lot of the parts in the world. But you know, and and while that's happening, hatred is still on the rise, and the more they see uh, us out there, uh, the more they they hate us. So. They try to fight that and try to shut us down because we're try we're becoming more mainstream. So uh, and it 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 it, uh, it encourages them to be out and public about their their hatred, and that's happening here in the U.S. Anyway, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, uh, but uh, what about Juan Pablo and uh, Natalie about uh, being on TV? Yeah, I have to say that I was really scared about it. <laughs> But it uh, happened with uh, something really special for me because thanks to the pandemic, a lot of people could, could watch the film and more people that have no access to cinemas or film festival could watch the film. So we could span this, span this kind of stories and happen something really special because I was in a country house with my family and people of this area has now the opportunity to access to this kind of stories you mean i mean uh, and what was really special because i was afraid because this is not a typical story uh, in in films of colombia or from colombia and these people could understand everything that happened at the film uh, they watched the film and they were identified even if they are not part of the lgbtq community and i was like too happy because I was thinking something like, we are done, we are doing something well. I mean, and if two, one or two people uh, can understand this kind of film and can change their vision and expand their horizons, horizons we're doing something well. And that means more for me than everything. And we are changing something in our country and we are uh, generating respect to the LGBTQ community. So being in television with my gay film <laughs> was just one of the amazing experience for me, for my family and for all the people that could see the film. Well, um, I, I'm not living with my parents right now, but my dad is like my number one critic. 
So it was like really exciting because it's the first film. Um, it's an LG TV film as well. But I mean, it was like amazing the response because my dad is like really like his his response are like, I love the film. Great. <laughs> I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a movie that's bringing, you know, like the new generation, the new ideas. So it was amazing. And my friends, because in college, you know, it was the first time that I could actually, you know, I had an experience with loads of friends of mine that, you know, like how, how they say, you know, they, that got out of the closet and that really discover themselves. So for me, it was also a really important film because I, I have many, many friends that, that have lived that experience and that have have confronted that experience. So it's amazing to to share that that story and and to be to participate as an actor in, in these kind of stories that are now nowadays, you know, that now television, that now the media is kind of allowing us to to tell these other kind of stories that it's it's real life, you know, like you said, it's it's not another character. It's just a, another human being that also has conflicts in their lives. And that also is searching for, for freedom of expression of of being. Yeah. So, Something great. happened two years after shooting the movie. Now I'm working for a Colombian soap opera. And my character, it's, it's a gay um, character who is trying to get out of the closet in, in national television. So we are keeping like telling this kind of stories for all the country. If not with just the movie, with soap operas, with the literature, with the, with the politicians, with everything, we are putting the, the spotlight in the subject. Yeah. So now you've been stereotyped. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so now my, my question is related to that. I mean, for you, Juan Pablo and Miguel, because um, I know when you read the script and you know what the vision of uh, Francisco and David uh, uh, was, um, and you embraced it, um, but in the back of your head, was there any kind of hesitance in um, taking on a gay role as actors because it could limit you, or you know, you know, you're still in in a in an environment that uh, values machismo a lot, and uh, was there any fear at all on taking on a gay role? Not at all. Not at all, because I I, I am part of a Really like to leave it all space. I work yeah, a theoretical company who also put this subject in, in their in their uh, place. And for me, maybe is 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 different because that shows me a different way of love of relationships because I, I'm straight. But now I'm open to learn about love and other things. And actually, I, I don't really think it being straight or gay matters. We are just human beings. So. For me, the, the curious thing is after after Adrian, I have this Felipe Mackenzie character from this soap opera. I told you, I made another uh, theater, uh, theater uh, play, interpreting like playing a, a gay uh, character. I made Shakespeare in Love, and I was one of these Elizabethan like actors who play uh, <laughs> like female characters. So <laughs> I just started to make the same characters for maybe three or four years. And now it's time to just try another one. <laughs> it's time to be straight again, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's time to just be able to, to connect to the human sense. Yeah. That's all. Well, it's, it's good that, you know, it shows your versatility. But, you, you, you know, hopefully you'll get offered other roles. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Juan Pablo? Yeah, in my case, I was so glad to to play Sebastian because, as I said before, I, I, will, I love to represent the LGBTQ community and this story helps us to represent this community with respect and without, without stereotypes. I think that I was more worried about cutting my hair than <laughs> to, to play a role <laughs> like Sebastian because, yeah. <laughs> but it was one of the best experience because that helped me to look really, really different because I changed the way that I look, the way that I think. And yeah, I mean, yeah. The way that he dressed, sure. the, way, the way that he acted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I knew yeah. hair was important to you after seeing your hairstyle today. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but that helps to my character because <laughs> yeah. it's really different in so many ways. I have to cut my hair, I was just skinnier, I have to use glasses and a lot of things. And I, <laughs> but everything about the film was, it was amazing for me because I learned from everyone and also for the story of the film. So I guess I'm going to go back to uh, uh, David and Francisco. So um, now that the film has been made, because I, I feel like in the beginning you have a lot of, a lot, you want to accomplish a lot with this little film from the sounds of it, you know, you want it to be something that would represent uh, LGBTQ community in Colombia, and you want it to be seen by a lot of people. Now that the film is out there, are you happy with what you have? Yes, I'm, I'm very proud of the film. Um, a, lot of, a lot of effort went into creating it from the beginning to the end, and everyone that worked on it was so dedicated to the project. And for me, it's, I, it's just so gratifying to, to see the film um, and, and see where it's played and, and see that, you know, festivals like Image Out are, are championing it. Because, you know, again, for me, it's, it's a big win for everyone that's a part of this project from beginning to the post-production. And yeah, the film, the film is uh, it's the first film. We learned a lot from the experience. I think everyone that was a part of it learned so much and yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited to see where we go next uh, with the project. Uh, to add to that, I mean, I, I will say I'm very happy. I think, though, I think, I think as a director, I think this is a, was a wonderful and important experience for us, and that helped us learn for the next projects, and helped us also kind of understand the stories that we want to tell. Um, and, and that I think is really important because I think after this film, there will be definitely more LGBT films. There will be more films about Latin America and, and Latino films. Um, and, you know, one of the other really important things was, you know, this bond that we created with these three actors and with our hall cast and our crew, um, you know, there's some of my, there are some of our best friends now. We'll probably work with them again um, in the future, definitely. Um, and, you know, they, the, the, the hall experience of, of just showing the film and being able to have it out out there in festivals like Image Out, as they've said, it's extremely it's 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 rewarding that people are enjoying it, that people are seeing it as as something uh, um, as something uh, to be seen, and and I think that that is that's right now. I'm just really just excited about this hall festival and run I, and being able to see it. And I just want to make one more point. Um, because one of the things that has been wonderful about seeing the, seeing the response to the film so far is, as you noted earlier, there's a lot of things in the film that, that, are, that are become conversation talking points and people don't see it as just one kind of film. They see it as many different layers. And I think that that's also very gratifying because we put a lot into it and we really wanted to kind of engage with a lot of conversations. And we were scared, honestly, at some points that maybe there was too much of a lot of things but to feel that for in general, people have found that we found a nice balance in how to tell the story and all those things and have them coalesce around this theme of fear and identity. Um, that also is very rewarding. It was, it was a long journey, but I'm just thrilled that, you know, audiences are being able to see it. Yeah, and, and Image Shout is so glad to be part of that journey. Um, we're coming up to an hour, but before we, uh, before we start, uh, um, uh, saying goodbye. I just want to ask uh, our three actors here, because you know, the, uh, David and Francisco, was, uh, they, they're talking about a lot of things they learned uh, from making the movie. Uh, was there any one particular important thing uh, that you learned from being part of this movie? Uh, what is your takeaway the, you know, uh, from, from, from being part of this movie? So let's start with uh, Juan Pablo this time. Yeah. I learned with this film that maybe in your way, you are going to find a lot of people who want to knock you down. I mean, that happened at the film uh, with Sebastian and uh, or things or situations that if you follow your dreams and you continue dreaming, you can find the place that you belong. So also I can say that love's love and I'm so happy to be part of the film. I'm so happy to be part of Image Out Film Festival. And I invite everyone to watch our film and both for our film. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what, what about you, Natalie? <clears throat> well, I think every project is amazing because you grow as an actor, you grow as well as a human being. And I think this film left me amazing friends, amazing partners with whom I would really love to keep working with. Um, amazing talent and uh, like I've said you know um, these you know in all this time of coronavirus that we're all kind of meditating it's like you know working as a team you know with the most important thing for us and, and for us to to evolve to grow as human beings is, is working all together and I think that's the most important thing and to and, and to respect and, and love so the film yeah all these, these these beautiful things that I think are really important for us as well as artists because we're so sensible. So it's like to, to, to take all the good and bad experiences that you've lived because that's how you grow. Yeah. Vote for nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Miguel? I was thinking in, in, in the human uh, rewards I, I have after finishing the, 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 the movie. I, I think Friends, the, the movie, uh, it's, it's the first time I, I keep talking a lot with the part of the guards with Francisco, and I'm so happy about what happened with them and their Opera Wire project too, and I'm all the, all the time looking for them and watching what's happening with Natalie too, when she's working on her stuff, and now she's part of this uh, cinema project, and now she's working on this uh, TV show, and and I have news for all of them, and I'm happy for them. And I was thinking in technical stuff, like how to work about the craft of, of, of creating a movie. Um, I think I, I work a lot with, with our uh, TF, and, and I, I, I have more sensibility about light after this movie. And the shoot, I, I, I was really like into working with him and understand the, the light the shoot, uh, how I can co-create with the camera, not, not only with my partners and colleagues, also with the camera, with the directors, and that, that craft was really cool for me, and I keep yeah. that in the way. Yeah. I was going to say that lighting is a great part of this movie, but we don't have time to talk about now. <laughs> <laughs> So I, my, my takeaway is it seems like you created a bond, uh, you know, making this movie, you know, the actors have become friends. So really the next thing to do is for Francisco and David to to write a sequel because the movie is open-ended anyway. Maybe you can call it somewhere or something. Uh, and, you know, you, you definitely have to bring these people back together again and make another movie. What do you think? Maybe, maybe, maybe in a few, maybe we'll wait a few years, let them uh, live a little bit, and then we can come back and find them in a different point in their life when they reconnect. Let's do this the next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Make sure Miguel gets uh, a non gay roles first, and then you can come back <laughs> to this one, right? So, my, my, pet, my, pet peeve, my pet peeve about Colombia, not about Colombia, I love Colombia, I've been to Colombia. Um, but you know, people who spell Colombia with a U, oh. and then I always want to scream when I see that. And I'm like, and these are very educated people, people who travel, and like, why can't you spell the country correctly? Yeah, uh, I've, I, I've had those experiences. We we say we say Colombia, not Colombia. So Colombia is with you, Colombia is with now. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's but, Colombia, not Colombia. Yeah, <laughs> and. I remember some, someone who asked me, uh, how much time do you spend going around the island? So like, a, well, for maybe three months. It's a, it's a continent. I don't know, it's huge. <laughs> it, it, touch, it touches the sea, uh, the, the ocean, but it's not, you know, it's not an island. <laughs> you have islands, you know, by Cartagena, there's some islands there, so. Yes. San Andres, Providencia. Yeah. Now, now I'm just showing off because I've been there. Just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for being with us tonight. And um, this is so great to have you and, uh, you know, you be part of Image Out. And, uh, you know, there are some blessings uh, about this pandemic sometimes, and this is one of them. And 
uh, uh, best of luck uh, to your next projects. Nice. And, um, and uh, we hope we see you again in other movies. And we hope, uh, David and Francisco, you keep making those uh, queer films uh, that are for film festivals. And uh, you have to hit me up when you, when you have them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much, Michael. Thank you very much for being, for showing our film. Thank you very much to the audience who see, who's seen the film. Obviously, vote for the audience award. But I also, <laughs> I also now that I do have the platform, you know, right now, uh, this festival is showing the the LGBT community is showing our community and the things that we still have to progress. So, you know, as a, as a, as a platform that I do have, I, I also encourage everyone who's watching to go and vote. Uh, in this November 3rd, uh, because our our rights are under attack and we need uh, to have this president out of the White House. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can say that. <laughs> so I, I can't say that. Um, so anyway, um, we have to say goodbye to our, uh, to our uh, audience, but if you want to hang out for a little bit when, when the broadcast ends, you know, we can say goodbye. Thank of you. Have so a good night, everyone. Thank you so much, Thank you so much interpreters, for being here and to. Yeah, they worked hard. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, Wanya and uh, John, right? Yes. Yes.